Hello, so in today's video I'm going to talk about some of the cheapest gas masks currently on the surplus market and that is the Czech CM3 and the Polish MC1. Now, some sellers even have these cheaper than GP5s, at least in the UK. Like, you can get them for between 5 and £10 with the satchel and the filter and everything. So, um, I get a lot of questions now, although I've, you know, I have done videos on these masks previously, but I thought I'd talk about both these masks together, because they're essentially the same mask. Um, are they worth getting? Because a lot of people say, for a price that low, they must be awful, right? Um, they can't be good at all. And they're actually surprisingly decent for what they are. But they are very, very basic. You know, even more basic than the GP5. They do use straps rather than um, a rubber hood style. I um, mean, you know, like a helmet mask. So there's a bit more sort of variation in them that way. But other than that, they're very, very basic. So as far as I'm aware, the Czech CM3 came out before the Polish MC1, but I can't be totally certain on that. But both of the masks are the exact same design, but the quality of them is slightly different. So this is a Czech CM3. So Basically, you've got um, a soft rubber face piece that's actually very comfortable. Um, you've got your two eyepieces, um, and you've got a bake light that looks very nice um, valve assembly. So you can see there, that's your GOST filter port, and there's your um, XL valve. Now, that's just got a little cover on it there. Oh, you can take the cover off. But, you know, that's the cover off. You can see there, there's the valve assembly, there's the XL valve. Um, and that's not quite 40mm, so you can't screw it in on the wrong side. So let's put that cover back on. Um, so the mask is very simple, but it does actually have Tissot tubes. Um, so as you can see there, it will you know, bring in fresh air onto the lenses to defog them. And your exhale valve is there. There's no oral nasal cup, but it's a very simple mask. So for most of the surplus sellers, you'll probably get the mask and a filter. Some of them come with like instruction manuals and whatever else. Now... There have been questions raised about the safety of Polish and Czech Cold War filters. For the sake of this video, I'm going to put them on. I certainly consider them to be safer than the Soviet filters, personally. Um, but, you know, again, if you don't want to use them, don't use them. Um, and again, well, now I've taken the cap off for this one, these O-rings are quite useful. Keep hold of them, as said, because sometimes it lets you force a NATO filter onto these type of masks. So I'm not going to try it out with this one today, but I'm going to stick that O-ring in there on top of the other O-ring and then screw the filter on. So as said, if you are particularly worried about these filters, get an FP5 or something similar to put on them. But for the sake of this, I'd certainly consider it safer than the GP5 filter and I'm not going to, um, you know, worry too much because the amount of asbestos you'd get from wearing a filter like this for a couple of minutes for video is very low, not that I'd recommend, you know, risking yourself. Um, anyway, so it's a size 4. Now, this is the exact same material um, in terms of rubber and straps that the um, M10 is made out of, or the OM10, and the um, CM4. So, it's if you like how those masks feel, you'll like this mask. So, let me pull this over my face. There you go. And I'll just tighten the bottom straps. If I can get out the things, there we go. So, that's the mask on. As you can see, it's pressurising. It's not the most comfortable mask in the world, but for the very low price, it's comfortable enough. As you can see, the Tissot tubes do their job. It might be quite hard to hear me of this on because it doesn't have a proper voice diaphragm. Which is an interesting thing I'll note when we talk about the Polish one, it's sort of got a pseudo voice diaphragm. So, as you can see, it's quite a cool looking mask in my opinion. It's a very basic one, but for what it is, it's made very well. So I'll get this mask off now and then we'll look at the Polish variant, uh, the CM1, sorry, the MC1. If I can just find the strap release, there you go. Pull on the buckles there, that one do these straps. I might loosen two of these ones actually slightly just so it's a bit. If I can. Ah, no, that's fine, it'll pull off just like that. Nice thing about this one as well is it has one of those neck carry straps so you can keep it sort of hanging from your neck like that if you wanted to. Anyway, I'll reseal this filter up. I've not done a test to see if this filter still blocks any odours, um, but you know, it seems to work anyway. Right, so I'll just chuck this one back in its satchel. Um, actually, before I do, I'll get out the Polish one, and then we can actually look at both of them at once. 
and here is the Polish MC1, but as you can see it is fundamentally the same mask if I hold both of them up. Um, the only difference is I think the valve assembly with the exhale valve and intake valve is slightly bigger on the uh, CM3. Yep, it's a bit annoying when you've got two masks like this with the same names. Yeah, the CM3 has a slightly bigger valve assembly. Um, interesting to note though that my um, CM3 is a size 4, whereas my Polish MC1 is a size 2. So, just to point that out, you see there, 4 and 2. The rubber looks like it's preserved slightly better on the CM3. This is from 1973, apparently. Is there a date stamp on my Polish one? Yes, it looks like there's one there. Hang on. It's a bit faded, but... Looks like it's either 89 or 95 that it says there, or maybe 82. But as you can see, maybe on the camera, they're quite hard to read. There's the date stamps on this one. So, I guess the Czech one's been made from a better rubber. Overall, the Czech one does seem higher quality than the Polish one, but they are fundamentally the same mask. Now, what I will say is better on the Polish one, is if you look at the exhale valve here... Can I just unscrew this again? You'll notice that there's a sort of mesh over it. Now, that mesh um, acts as a kind of voice diaphragm. I've just pulled it out. You see there's an exhale valve there, and there's the mesh. So what the mesh does is will vibrate slightly when you exhale and talk, um, which should in theory amplify, um, you know, your voice a little bit more than if you didn't have that there. So anyway, you can see that the valve intake's pretty much the same, the Tiso tubes are in the same place. The rubber and the strap quality isn't quite as good on this one, but there's not a massive difference in all honesty. You know, the fundamentals of the mask, as I was saying, are exactly the same. So I'll get out the Polish, um, I think they're called MS4 filters, aren't they? Um, these type of filters. The good thing of MS4 filters is they do actually have a proper particulate layer there. So anyway, let's put that MS4 filter on. And we'll put the mask on. There you go, this is the uh, MC, sorry, yeah, the uh, MC1, yeah, makes a, a airtight seal. It's not really any less comfortable when it's on than the other mask, I'd say. This mask, although it's a smaller size, because the rubber's a bit more rigid, um, although that in some ways makes it less comfortable, at least on my nose it's a bit more comfortable because it doesn't cave in on my nose as much. The lenses seem to fog up for some reason slightly more on this one. The Tissot tubes still do their actual job. It still defogs properly, but as you can see, the mask is fundamentally the same. That little O-ring thing fell back out there, but yeah. The masks themselves are fundamentally the same. That'd be my good little thumbnail image there, I guess. But yeah, both of them 40mm gossed, uh, the valves and everything are in the exact same places, exact same strap system, exact same Tissot system. As far as I'm aware, the Polish one was like a licensed copy from the Czech one. But of course, maybe I'm getting that the wrong way around, but both these masks are good. But the question is when people are saying, I've seen these masks for like £5 or like $5, are they worth getting for that price? Definitely. Yeah, um, these are not badly made masks at all. They're very simple, but for the really low price, I'd say in some way these are, you know, better masks than GP5s. Especially because you've got adjustable straps, which, you know, is um, a make or break thing for some people. Um, but yeah. Now, I haven't tried it yet, but it might be potentially possible where you've got, if you put an extra, you know, like O-ring in there, it might be possible to force 40mm NATO filters onto this and make a seal. If so, you've got like a £5 mask that can fit NATO filters and still work. But there you go, that's my thoughts on them. As I said, I have done videos on these before. But yes, for the very low price that you can get these at the moment on the surplus market, I would say that they are very good masks and yes, um, you know, they are practical and everything else. So there you go, that's my thoughts on them. Um, the Polish uh, MC1 and the Czech CM3. Both very good masks.